What's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. This is a beautiful live money. You guys have missed all my channel. She's back again to full. So expect it. I know I'll see it. I'll get I'll get some. I'll get some. Right, today's video, I would want to explain the difference between deep um, boxes or deep modifiers and shallow modifiers and what they do and how you can use them in every photo you'll be shooting later in the future. Like I've, I'm trying to start or I'm trying to go on this one light journey because I think you people enjoyed, you've, you've been enjoying my previous one light videos and I feel like this is something I need to do for you guys. So explaining what's the deep modifier as why we have a deep modifier and why we have a shallow modifier. So today's video to my left, I have the 150 centimeter deep bow parabolic from photo place, um, which will be led by my 8600 BM. And we'll be comparing it to, unfortunately, I don't have a 150 centimeter um, octa box. So we'll be using a 140 centimeter, just 10 centimeters lower than the 150. Or probably give the same, um, you know, spread of light, softening. But uh, we will be checking for um, what the deep parabolic is doing and what the shallow modifier will be doing. So the difference between these two, I'll say this. The deep gives deep contrast. By deep contrast, I mean when you look at the shadows, they are deeper shadows compared to that of the shallow modifier, which, which will be the 140 centimeter octabox. I have this app I use on my laptop to figure out my lighting setup. Whenever I use the deep modifier, it shows that the light spread is quite, you know, the, the shadow, the shadow casted is not that deep. But when you use that of the shallow modifier, you see a deep contrast, contrast between um, the highlights and the shadow. So today's video is also an experiment. I'll be experimenting. I am not really sure. I have seen it. I have not tried it before. I've always been saying deep contrast, shallow contrast. Well, today we'll figure it out. Are we sure the deep modifier gives a deep contrast when it comes to shadows or the shallow modifier gives a deep contrast when it comes to shadows? So just stick with me to the end of the video and learn a thing or two. But before we get into this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn on the bell notification icon, which is very important for me, just so that you get notified all the time when I drop new videos. I'll be using my, give my camera. I'm using my Canon 5D Mark IV. I'll switch between the 50mm and the Sigma 85mm lens. Today I have my trigger, right? The X2T trigger. Like I mentioned earlier, the AD600 modified by this 150cm box, deep bow parabolic, and we'll do the comparison with that of the shallow modifier. Also, as you can see, today's set is different, new, fresh, right? It's a backdrop. What <laughs> is the <laughs> yes, put, put it here. It's a backdrop, right? So the backdrop I got from Chicago Pair. Um, if you've been with me here on my YouTube and also most of my Instagram posts, you usually see me use a lot of materials when I'm shooting, you know, fine arts portraits and all that, right? So this tie and dye backdrop I got from Chicago Pair. Um, I think it costs somewhere around 260, roughly 260. So go and cop one. It comes in different designs. This is a black, there's a brown, there's one with purple. You know, you know what tie and dye is, right? You tie it and you dye it, and this is how it looks. So I'm sure I'm going to put up the link to this particular backdrop down in the description. Make sure you check it out. Chica Copper, cheap, affordable. Try and get one yourself. All right, so I've been, I've been talking for a long while. Let's just get into today's video, and I'll show you the difference between that and the shallow modifier make sure you subscribe okay bye So back again with another video. I'm trying to be like those influencers again. Hey, what's up, guys? Back again with another. All right, right. All right. So back here with our beautiful lemony. All right. I'll be shooting like I said. With I've already mentioned these. So quickly, I'll take a test shot. My, I have. I think I have mentioned before in any of my previous videos that the settings don't really matter. But I'll still put it out there for shaggy reasons. 
F4, ISO 100, shutter speed 1 over 160, the flash power is at 1 over 32 plus 0.3. I will be, you know, moving around the flash power just so that I can get the ultimate best lighting for our shoot. So as you can see, or I don't think you can see this, but I am feathering. In my previous video, I mentioned this. Feathering doesn't mean soft lighting. Soft lighting is coming from this big modifier. And for how close this modifier is to my subject, determines how soft the light will be. So go and learn more on soft lighting. Or probably if you want to learn more on soft lighting, let me know down in the comment section. I'll probably dedicate a whole video for soft light and hard light and feathering. We'll compare all the three. Right, so I'm feathering to make sure the light is even. But yes, uh, so let's just feather. Right. And I'm bouncing back light using the styrofoam I have here, the white side, just because the background is black. So I'm not going to really see that separation from, you know, our subject. Kindly move the chair forward a little bit. Yes. Okay. All right. So I'll quickly take a test shot. ISO 100 F4 50 mm. Okay, so we'll turn, turn a little bit this way. That's fine. Cross your leg if you can. No, no, not that way. I mean, cross your leg down there. Great. Now the hands this way. All right. So this is our first test shot. As you can see, I'm going to pull it up on the screen. I'll make sure to zoom in just so that we can see what you're talking about. So this is the first one. And the bounce card is doing a good job. So right now, I don't want to feather. I'll just use um, the whole box to light our subject. I'm sure I'm going to get a spill on the backdrop. You see how the backdrop is? It's dark, but it has some gray patches in there to catch the light I need. So let's see how, when the light is directly on. A beautiful subject. Now, if I move the modifier in this direction, the background also catches an amount of light. Compared to the previous one, you can tell from this side of the backdrop, now catches an amount of light. So I am seeing some contrast when it comes to highlights and shadows. And I'm seeing that deep contrast here. So like I said, deep shadows, deep contrast coming in from this deep modifier. So I'll quickly change to the shallow one, then we'll do that comparison again. So don't go anywhere, be stiff. So what I'm currently doing is making sure it's at the same distance. With the deep parabolics, there's, a dis there's quite a distance from the light source to the outer baffle. But when you take a look at this octabox, the distance from the light source to the outer baffle is quite shorter compared to the So the light travel to hit the first inner baffle and the second inner baffle, I mean second outer baffle makes that deep contrast in there, it cuts the light and it's direct proportions. Same thing can be said for this, but that distance is quite shorter. So I'll probably shoot with the same settings, then you can see what we are talking about. So the first thing I'll need to do is to make sure I do that feathering thing, right? Are you okay? You're sleeping. Okay, back now. Same settings, we haven't changed anything. Turn down. So if we compare this to the deep modifier, right? I haven't changed the light settings. I haven't done anything to it. So this is the feathering. Now let me move this just so that it hits head directly. The hotspots coming in from the middle. Now let's see how this one also looks. Okay. Hmm. So 
So what is contrast anyway? Can I? Let me put my hand. You can come and beat my hand. What is co contrast? Contrast is the difference between highlights and shadows, right? That is what we know contrast to be. I'm currently shooting at 1 over 16 when it comes to the flash power. Let me try and compensate for the light source. Alright. That's the 1 over 16, sorry. Shooting at 1 over 32 plus 0 0.3. So let me try and compensate for the light just because of the new distance we have. Alright, let me turn the face here a little bit. Yes. Uh, let the eyeballs be there. Okay, so let's compare it to. So after I change the modifier, I think because of the distance between the inner buffer, the outer buffer, and the light source compared to the deep bow parabolic, you would have to adjust your light setting. Currently, I'm at 1 over 32 without the plus 0 0.3. And um, to be very honest, I think. I can see this deep shadow contrast thing you're talking about. I would really have to sit behind my laptop to confirm. But from what I know, from what I have read, they always say that this gives shallow shadows, right? That means um, the spread of light is so shallow that the shadows that you'll be getting will not, will not have deeper contrast compared to the deep bow parabolic. I don't know if it is because of the choice of, you know, or the choice of brand of the modifiers, or I'm not using appropriate ones, but from what I am currently seeing, to be very honest, I don't see any difference. With the exception of me changing the lighting intensity, I don't really see a difference in the contrast. Let me see, which one to this. Okay, I think I see it. So what my app was saying was correct. This one is actually giving me a deeper contrast or deeper shadow compared to the deep bow parabolic. This is the first test or this is the first experiment I'm doing. I'll do some later in the future to confirm this theory and probably come out to tell you the truth about these two modifiers. But for now, if I compare the last image and the first image, I feel like the contrast in the first image, right, it's quite lower when it comes to the shadows compared to that of the last image when I compensated for the light. So, as you guys know, I'll probably do more shoots to change the setup and all that. But this is what I wanted to teach you guys today. I hope you learned something new. I hope you learned how to differentiate between deep and shallow contrast and deep shallow, I mean deep modifiers. Why this is a deep modifier and why this is a shallow modifier. And I think I have to trust the software. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I'm glad you learned something new. Make sure you subscribe before you leave. Turn on the bell notification icon. Check your Instagram handle out. Check mine also out. You'll probably see the images there. And I've confirmed from here, I can also put out some raw files just so that you can learn, practice with it. And if you don't have the chance to do this setup, you have this. So learn, practice, which is, which is quite important to become better when it comes to you know, the whole craft itself. Thank you so much and I'll see you in my next video. Peace out. Do this.